it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here to do Mail Call Friday. The end of the month is when I normally do Mail Call, but because I had the birthday challenge blocks taking over my mail, I didn't want to wait until once a month to post, so I've been posting more frequently. But now that it's September, we're back on schedule, and so I have received a few things in the mail. <music> and an envelope and then I just want to state to Claudette that I did receive this package in the mail I am not going to open this one on the channel but I wanted to let you know that it came and then Claudette also sent me another card so let me open it She says, thank you. And this is the front of the card. It says, Dear T, just a note to say thank you for a memorable retreat experience. Your skills for organization made the retreat wonderful. I had a great time. Because of you, I visited places I know I would not have had the chance to see. You thought of everything to make the experience memorable, and I thank you. I want to especially say how grateful I was for you to get me and take me back to the airport. I know now how much out of your way you had to drive to do that. So thank you very much. It was greatly appreciated. I am looking forward to our next adventure. Fondest regards, Claudette. Thank you so much. And then she's got a note that she didn't receive a photo that Sarah sent. Will I send it to her? Of course, I will send it to you, Claudette. And thank you so much for attending retreat. Claudette came, flew in from California. And so there was no way that I was not going to pick her up from the airport or let her take an Uber for some extravagant amount. So um, that was a wonderful adventure. I'm looking for scissors now because I have not opened any of these packages and I've got books here. I have my paper scissors. These next items, I know where they're from. They're actually from Trey. And she sent these from Thrift Books. She mentioned in one of my chats that she was going to send me some books. And let's see what they are. And I'll put Trey's name on the screen because I do want her to get credit for it. I cannot pronounce her full name. So in this first package, I've got two books. And then I think it's one book in each of the other packets because I picked four books. Um, I ordered, she gave me the opportunity to choose which books I wanted since she knew I was getting rid of books as well as she didn't want to send me a duplicate book. So I went online and I purchased the books that she gave me and the price range that she gave me. And I've got 1,000 great quilt blocks. And I thought that I could use this for making some more block videos when I get a chance to do that. So this book is by Maggie McCormick Gordon. And I don't know when it was published. Let's see if it's inside. It was copyright in 2003. And then they've got various quote blocks. And then they've got the grid underneath telling you how many pieces you need to cut of each shape. And then it also tells you the size of the block. So this is going to be a very handy tool. And I'm also grateful that it's a small size book, even though it's pretty thick. I'd say it's about an inch and a quarter thick, but it is a small book, so it's easy to store. So I appreciate that. The next one that I got was free motion quilting made easy 186 designs from eight simple shapes got a little beat up in the corner here <laughs> but uh, these are new books they're not used books 
and this one looks pretty interesting too has charts and then they actually give you the directions for sewing I just noticed that I got a little scuff mark here and I'm thinking that came probably from the smaller book so packaging may not be as good but the books themselves the information that it contains is what I'm interested in and this book is from Eva A. Larkin and again this is from thriftbooks.com so it's an online company and sometimes they have books that are reduced price not all of the books are reduced price I think sh these books were five dollars or less and they do have other books that are valued at a higher cost as well like your new newly published books so yeah you can get that too again I was thinking about T Quill's channel and I got this book as well 365 fun to stitch quilt blocks just trying to pick some block books that I didn't have for some different blocks maybe and so these look like they're more advanced blocks do have some simple ones but I've also seen pages where there's a lot of curve piecing or appear to be some set in seam pieces so awkward cutting positions so yeah but this one is a good book as well just got more difficulties it's got pages where it's got templates I don't want to be using those let's see when this book was published it was first printed in 2002 and then I forgot to tell you who it was by it's actually edited by Jean Jeannie Stauffer and Sandy Hatch and it's actually a book from the House of White Birches so this is the front and then they also have samples of the projects on the back as well I forgot to show you the back of this quilt cool book and that uh, it I did tell you that it was Eva Larkin it's by that patchwork place it's the publisher and the book was published in 2009 so I have one more book here to open <laughs> so so far the uh, free motion quilting made easy is the only book that is soft cover the rest of them are hardback and again I got more quilt block books 201 quilt blocks motif projects and ideas so this is that book let me show you the back and it's by Louise Bell the publisher is Seiko books haven't heard of them and this book was published in 2008 so it's got some applique blocks some piece blocks so here are some of those piece blocks has some applique blocks like so so different types of blocks are in here they've got quilts tablecloths pillows a knitting bag so different styles of quilt blocks are in here and then they also have a section that's showing you how to do particular techniques it's T here again and I thought I was signing off but I decided to add in this bag of supplies that I got from Jennifer I received these at retreat and I just wanted to tell Jennifer thank you so much for sharing your treasures with us she was gifted some containers of fabric and she brought some of those containers to the quilt retreat and the girls were able to select some items from it so I am going to put this on the floor and we're going to show you what's inside of this bag first thing that I'm pulling out of the bag is some fusible web for making appliques and just by the feel of this I think this is the heavy-duty fusible the kind that you do not stitch through so you have to be really careful when you are using this particular product 
I tried to unroll it a bit to see if there was any name brand on here and there isn't a brand name on this. And then inside of this fusible webbing is some contact paper and it's your regular peel and stick contact paper so it was really a lot of contact paper more so than fusible webbing and so you can use this to cover books and posters paper anything that you want to laminate i sometimes would do that with my applique pattern so when i'm if i'm using it over and over again then i wouldn't have to worry about it getting beat up so I do use contact paper sometimes. And so I just decided to go ahead and take it because I didn't want it to go into the landfill. And this is the actual fu fusible webbing. And there really isn't a whole lot of it. But again, I have a feeling that this is very heavyweight. And if you try to stitch through heavyweight fusible web, it just gums up your needle. So if you're a newbie and didn't know that, I just wanted to share that. So you wouldn't do that accidentally. If you're sewing through fusible, you want to try to get a sew-in weight or a light weight. They have your regular weight, light weight, and heavy weight. Just depends on which manufacturer you are purchasing it from. So this is how much fusible webbing there is. There's this grab bag of all sorts of items in here and I probably will not pull all of these out. <laughs> See, we got some webbing, even got some camo webbing. All kinds of webbing is in here. Sometimes I use that when I'm doing my bags. There's a jumbo clip in here. It has never been open. I really could use that. Take that out right now. And then lots of other webbing. There is some a belt or something that was embroidered that's the front this is the back but this has the ends already finished so i don't know what that was for but that'd be great in a crazy quilt some hook and loop just lots of miscellaneous odds and ends got a, some belt buckles some blanket binding and so I will have to go through this and determine what it is that I want to keep. Got more webbing in this bag that was inside of it and then a whole lot more buckles. So lots of sewing notions here. So she had a lot of fleece. I don't really use fleece, but I thought since she had so much, maybe it's a time for me to start to use some fleece, maybe on the back of some quilts to test out as well. So this is about a yard piece here. This is another piece of fleece and it's just rolled up in itself. So it is quite a bit of yardage, but once I get it opened, I will show you the pattern. <laughs> it's very pretty. It's a paisley. Lots of it, which is good for backing. So I got this one because I wanted to make sure I had a lot. It does have a very wide border on the other side of white. Like the salvage is really large. But for quilting some quilts and trying it out, I don't think it would really matter. So let me just do a quick measurement one. So I have about three and a half yards and then it was sewed together right here for some strange reason. So this is <laughs> going to be four. Five. So about five and a half yards. So that's 
quite a bit that I can try out with some a quilt back. So that's pretty good. I'll fold that one up later. Have another piece of fleece. And I'm just going to guess again about a yard. So about a yard of fleece. And then there were a few quilt blocks. And since I'm doing all kinds of charities with quilt blocks, so I thought that I would save these. So here is one block. Two. A border unit of some kind. Very pretty. It's a nice idea for a border as well. See my camera flashing for the battery. <laughs> so we have a piece here. And then I have loads of, found a few more block pieces. So I just took these things because I knew that I could add them into crumb quilts. That's pretty cool. Another block. And then I got various pieces of fabrics. This has a little sparkle in it. Kind of a snowflake. This is a check. This would be cute for a child's sports quilt. Piece of brown. Trying to get through these really fast for this camera battery dies. <laughs> so all kinds of yardage, like this is a pretty good size. Some more sparkle print. It's a blue sparkle. This is a purple piece. Another blue sparkle, but it has stars. white sparkles or shall i say off-white is kind of a beige sparkle some gold accents in this brown had a bag here it says backing for your flower tulip quilt and it has a question mark on it and it's a piece of flannel it doesn't feel like cotton. It feels like it's flannel. And there may be a yard and a half of this fabric. And another piece of fabric, maybe a yard. I got scrap pieces, but I'm trying to get to the big pieces first. Got some panels here. This is a Charlie Brown panel. And you probably can't see it all, but here is some of it. So it's probably a book, maybe, but I will probably use it as a quilt panel for a charity quilt at some point. And then here is another panel. It is also a book for a book quilt. And again, I may end up cutting these out and just using them as little quilt tops. Have these scraps here. This one's really pretty. Another, some more pieces here. All of these are piece little units. Put them to the side. And then just scraps of some of the other pieces, maybe some additional scraps. And then I also have this bag here. I have no idea what's in it. So, piece of fabric. This is like a gingham check. I can feel the texture on that. This is a lot of 
this green a lot of yardage of this at least two yards probably can go in my backings and this is a homespun just some scraps here and then more yardage probably yard pieces here another piece that's probably a half yard maybe another piece that's probably a yard and a half to two yards and one last piece here that's probably a yard and a half to two yards and then had fat quarters of this same print so it's actually going to be three fat quarters total and that is it for this video Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next time. If you're interested in knowing what my P.O. box is, look in the description of any video. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a fantastic, safe, wonderful weekend.